Hi, this is Rose Catherine Kahn, fantasy illustrator, and today I am taking you through the process behind magic study. As usual, I started with a thumbnail sketch. I've brought it into Procreate on iPad Pro, and I'm drawing with an Apple Pencil. For this piece, I decided to start in grayscale so I could really focus on making sure my values were accurate. I wanted it to be a very dark and mysterious room, and it was important to me that the light, light source behind the main figure was very dramatic and interesting. Uh, so in my mind, uh, this character is Misa, Artemisa Winter from Centurnia, and she is in her room, and she is going over some ancient tomes and uh, trying to figure out how to unlock the gate to Centurnia. You'll notice a few times uh, a reference will pop up on my screen. That is Sarah Ford. She is a professional artist model, and she is the uh, creator behind Adorka Stock, which uh, previously was known as Senshi Stock, and I will have a link below to her work. Uh, she has absolutely fantastic fantastic reference photography um, and she also you know has a website a patreon a youtube all those things so early on in my work i basically I, I i start with some of the colors and of course the lights and the darks and i just loosely sketch in all of the objects so i know where they're going to be placed so I could think about how the light and the shadow will influence each other um, before I actually put in the color. And you'll see that right now I am just refining a few details on Misa's hair and constantly making adjustments. So this whole process was 110 hours, maybe it was 120 hours, is quite lengthy and I've shortened it to for you to 13 minutes. With a painting like this one in which the main figure is so prominent and so important that will be the area of the illustration where I will have the most detail and refinement early on. I mean I'll really render the, the figure um, to pretty much a finished state within the first 10 to 20 hours of the painting. Um, if the figure isn't right, the whole piece basically falls apart. So this is an absolutely critical step for me. Uh, you can see there in the foreground, I was creating a glass bottle and here I am adding the pattern. So when I have uh, an area of the illustration that has a pattern, I will usually create that in a separate document and then uh, bring it in and morph it and distort it to fit um, whether it be fabric or in this case a giant chair bed thing. Okay let's see where I'm doing. That flicker you see on the screen um, that's caused by uh, I'll be turning layers on and off as I'm working in order to uh, see things a little bit better and isolate them. So this recording was done directly in Procreate. Procreate has the ability to uh, export your entire process. So I'm taking advantage of that. Oh, the window. Everybody loves the window. I think that might be the, my sweet spot for this, this illustration. I really loved making that beaded curtain. So what I was going for with this space is, I mean, clearly it is a castle room. It is a little dark, a little mysterious, but it reflects Misa's personality. So there you have the pops of the bright color and the rainbows and you have jewels and other things that are interesting because she she is a teenager um, even though she's living in this very isolated castle oh and there's a Feltrani cat in the foreground and uh, I didn't write too much about them in Return to the Castle they, they appear more in the uh, subsequent novels but they're my winged cat species and there is a little dragon that's getting into the cookies. And oh, there to the left of my dragon, you have Pearl and Muse and Pepper, my cats, rendered as tiny little statues. 
For the painting in the background, that is a map of Centurnia, which I grabbed from a previous work. I think I'm about to draw in the books here. Yeah, there I go. Each one individual. Every little page, all the spines and the bindings, and later on you'll see I'll go in and I'll add all the, the golds detailing. Um, but when I'm at this phase, I'm just Looking at light and shadow, considering my light source, trying to figure out how to generate form. So you'll notice that I use bold colors throughout a lot of magentas and purples, um, but I still, my foreground elements are very saturated and bright, and then the elements in the background are darker. Oh, here I am working on the chandelier. It's funny, when I look back at a piece like this, I will reflect on um, where I was and what I was doing at the time. I mean, like just kind of unconsciously. So like every time I look at that chandelier, I think about being in Florida, we were visiting my in-laws and I remember I got up early one morning and I really studied how to draw crystals and um, got really into it. And uh, after that, I just love drawing crystals on everything and everywhere. Like, just give me an excuse, I will draw a crystal. You'll see I added the rock wall towards the top there. And that, I'm pretty sure I had a photograph of some rocks that I pulled in. Um, sometimes I'll do that when I have a natural texture um, that I, I've taken. And I always use my, my own photographs. Um, and usually I'll do that like for wood, rock, um, just things like that. Okay, there I am darkening the bookcase, playing with my light and shadow and more crystals. I love crystals. All right, and here I am about to add more detail on those blankets, drawing in fabric. When students are usually starting out um, with art classes, one of the early projects that it just all artists seem to um, do would be the still life. And usually you're drawing a vase with some fabric or something along those lines. And um, I know for many young artists, they find that very boring and mundane, but even that is an important exercise because it teaches you to look at how fabric drapes. Uh, so that when I'm, I'm doing a piece like this and I'm you know drawing ball gowns and blankets, I don't have to stop and really think about it. I intuitively know what fabric looks like and how it folds and bends and captures the light and all of that comes from just years of, of practice. Ah, there I am adding in the gold banding on the books. This is my, my favorite part of the illustration when things have really come together. Well, I shouldn't say my favorite part. I mean, they're all my favorite parts for different reasons, but I enjoy this stage in which everything is laid out. The light and the shadow it has been very well established and all I'm doing is adding in these little details that uh, cause a piece to really come alive. If you're hearing thumping in the background, it's not 
trolls at my door. It's my children whose uh, playroom is located directly above my studio. Speaking of my kids, um, the majority of this piece I did with my five and well at the time four and two year old around. Um, one thing that's nice about working with the iPad Pro is it's very uh, portable and it's something that I could use while sitting on the couch and my kids are watching TV or I could move to the playroom and this is something that was an adaptation that was absolutely critical for me to figure out um, as I, I wanted to continue with my career, but I wanted to stay home with my kids. So I had to figure out how to make that work. And the iPad was really instrumental in that process. Um, but then also there's a degree of acceptance and impatience. So when I'm doing something like this, it's usually in 10 or 15 minute chunks. And then I'll be asked to go get a sippy cup or make a waffle or... Um, you know, just the usual mom stuff. So then I'll have to put down the iPad, go do whatever I need to do, and then come back and work again. And I don't know if that also, uh, in some ways makes it easier when I'm working on a hundred hour piece because the process is not so long and, and grueling. It's, it's just broken up. Ah, you can see I did some adjustment there, increasing the saturation. And that's the wonderful thing about working digitally. I mean, you, you can't do that in real media. Adding some butterflies, and there we go. This is the finished magic study. Now, after we sent this to the puzzle manufacturer, um, they had a request that I brighten it up a bit. And that is this version, the Rainbow Magic Study. <laughs> 